Бодибилдинг сложно назвать именно профессией. Но вот последние пару лет, да, бодибилдинг стал для меня и профессией, и хобби. I bet you didn't know that that was a woman speaking, did you? What? Today we're going to be talking about Natalia Amazonka, or at least I think. I think it could also be Kuznetsova. Same person, different name, and I can't pronounce either of them. What? If you've been in the fitness industry long enough, or at least just been on Instagram long enough, you'll have likely seen this person many times before as you're scrolling through in your algorithm because she's an insane physique and surprisingly a woman, or at least something left that once was a woman. And this is a major talking point. And if I said shocking to you, it would be an understatement. Unfortunately, we don't get to see much of her despite her not being a small presence on the internet, pun intended. And it's likely due to the fact that she speaks specifically only Russian, does speak a little bit of broken English, but very little. So most of her audience is actually Russian. How did you discover bodybuilding? Ну, на самом деле, случайно, как и многие люди, я просто пришла в спортзал, на тот момент я была еще ребенком. Even though, as you just saw, she does have a contract with 5% Nutrition, a company we've talked about many times in the past, Rich Piana's company in specific. Which makes total sense, because she has that 5% mentality, in the sense that she's going to push to the extremes to get a physique that no one ever wanted, but she'll have it. And I'm sure that she's willing to do whatever it takes, as is the 5% Nutrition motto. There's no need to point out the obvious here, she's not claiming natural or anything, she's on a boatload of steroids. But I don't think a lot of people may realize actually how much it would take to look like this. There are actually a couple of blog posts that I dug up which quote her taking upwards of 200 milligrams of primabolin or propionate. I can't really tell due to the translation. It could be testosterone and not, not primabolin, which would be hectic as hell for a female because, well, primabolin is a DHT derivative, therefore it might not be as masculinizing as would directly using testosterone in this case. In fact, primabolin was developed for female use in more so the androgen sensitive like children and females. If she was using testosterone, well, it would make sense why she sounds and does replicate the look of a male at periods of time. But then on top of this, she's on 20 milligrams of Anovar pre-workout and let's just say that she's working out five times a week. I don't think that's too much of a stretch, nor do I think it's a stretch to say that she's probably taking some form of testosterone as there's also record of her claiming this and acknowledging that she has been using estrogen blockers for some time as well. Estrogen blockers being things like aromatase inhibitors or SERMs, selective estrogen receptor modulators, which honestly wouldn't make a whole lot of sense if she is exclusively on primobolin, but that's why I'm postulating that there could be some testosterone in there. But even without considering the pharmacology side of things, let's just consider the fact that she's 210 pounds of literal muscle mass. And when she's actually pushing to gain weight, meaning eating in a hypercaloric diet to mass, she's upwards of 250 50 pounds, and she stands at 170 centimeters for you communists out there, and for my American freedom unit people, it's five foot seven inches. Hate to say it, but you gotta give some perspective here. For almost being a foot shorter than me, she practically is bigger than me. I mean, pound per pound, she's bigger than me. I mean, dude, she's even stacked up against Andrew Jacks, mogging him into infinity. And so just 300 milligrams of total androgens sounds a little unrealistic, considering that she has an insane amount of muscle mass. For reference, this is high tier women's bodybuilding physique type stuff. I mean, it's it's insane. It's definitely paid off if that's what she's desired to be twice the size of a normal female competitive bodybuilder. And she does hold a ridiculous amount of records. So there's something to contribute to her life, I guess. Like in 2014, she's the champer. So like in 2014, she was the champion and record holding uh, in arm lifting and powerlifting at the Cup of Eurasia. And in 2014, she was the world champion and record arm lifting in Crimea. And in 2014, she was the world record in bench press. In 2014, she was the arm lifting cup. At, I don't even know what these things are actually, but her power lifting total is more than some dudes on gear. She's literally the embodiment of like level 99 on RuneScape in every category that you possibly get to. It's over 9,000! 9,000! 
thousand! Well, outside of anything dealing with actual athleticism. So at this point, it does seem that she's still trying to compete as an IFBB pro bodybuilder. I've seen some posts considering that she is going to be competing in this competition. And I'm writing this on the day prior to the show. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing this anywhere. I don't think she's her name's not actually on the list. So I don't think she's competing. And by the time this comes out, you'll know for sure. But there has to be a reason that she's still sustaining an absolutely massive physique, even after not competing in any bodybuilding shows for five years. Given all the drugs she would need to be taking to maintain this kind of size, it would make sense to me that there's got to be some kind of goal, right? It's not her health because she's literally destroying it as we speak. And I bet you'd actually be surprised on what that exact reason is. What do you mean? <laughs> What do you what do you mean? <laughs> if you head over to Nalia's Instagram and check her profile out, unlike Meg Sylvester, who we talked about on this channel before as sort of masculinizing herself with steroid abuse, we see that she really does try to maintain a feminine look, at least whatever she can in a sense of femininity at her size. I mean, I guess you can decide whether she looks like a real woman or not. I'd argue against it. But anyways, she gets her hair done. She has a lot of makeup, probably uses a lot of facetune i'm not even saying probably she uses a lot of facetune on her posts she wears quite a bit of feminine and revealing clothing and she definitely has some cosmetic surgeries to make her face more appealing you can tell this because her bone structure unlike many female bodybuilders who do abuse androgens or steroids looks pretty normal in some senses compared to you know counterparts and i think this is probably due to having many surgeries or filler injections and things of this nature so like i mentioned she has a couple photos that are quite revealing and in some sense, I guess that she's trying to boast that she still has a sex appeal and to each their own, I guess, but it's clearly landing on someone for an audience. Someone likes this stuff and she is married. So there's definitely someone into this kind of lifestyle. Oh, maybe he's getting begged. Uh, let's not talk about that. Okay. If we scroll up and look at her Instagram bio and we click on the link and scroll down to the bottom, we find exactly what this was leading to all along. Oh, the scandalous only fans link something we see in nearly far too many females within the bodybuilding industry and fitness industry at large. Now, I'm not going to obviously show any videos from the OnlyFans, nor am I ever going to subscribe to any OnlyFans account. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. But I do think that it's interesting that she also acknowledges in her bio that the page is there to support her in what she does, i.e. contributing to her pursuit in bodybuilding. Because as she mentions in this interview, she does say that female bodybuilding isn't very popular in Russia. I mean, realistically, it's nowhere near on par with, for example, male open bodybuilding in anywhere in the world. Obviously, that's not a whole lot of her fault, but it's just kind of what people gravitate towards due to their interests. I think people are much more privy to look at a male who is hypermuscular as opposed to a female who is extremely hypermuscular. One of those two things is sort of the norm in a certain sense, like the sort of superhero physique that you all imagine. And one of those is definitely not the norm in terms of societal expectations of the specific gender. And because of that, it's likely going to be really hard for her to afford the lifestyle that she's having or has. And I've also said this before in many other videos, but by Bodybuilding is not cheap. It's probably one of the most expensive sports you can do as an individual outside of racing cars or golf, maybe. If you want to get big, and I mean like really big, I don't mean just like, ah, I look pretty jacked. I mean like really big, like scary big. The amount of food you need to get alone is going to cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars a week. My average grocery bill when I was actively competing was somewhere around $400 per week. But I also ate really good foods and made sure I got a lot of organic stuff. But beyond that, the gear that is involved the steroids and other peptides that these people will abuse to leverage a better physique are going to be thousands of dollars a month. Then you have healthcare on top of this, other supplements which are over the counter. And this isn't just the case for female bodybuilding. This is all of bodybuilding. It is a truly expensive sport. If you're not even placing top three in one of the biggest shows in the world, you aren't even making $50,000 a year. And Chris Bumstead at the absolute peak of the industry 
industry, going on possibly six Olympia wins, only makes 50k from his winnings. Dudes driving around trash trucks make more in fucking United States. And of course, like they have sponsorships and things like this that pay them more, or at least you would hope that they do. In Chris Bumstead's case, he owns a series of companies that definitely pay him his dividends. But the point is, is there's not much money to be made, even at the highest of high levels in bodybuilding. And so imagine what other competitors might think. The only way you're able to make a sustainable living within this industry is by being sponsored or getting YouTube ad revenue or coaching, just having some kind of other business because bodybuilding itself is not sustainable in isolation. And unless you're the top three in the fucking world, all the world, the entire world, it's going to eat away at your cash and that cash is going to very quickly burn up. So back to Natalia, I can understand where she's coming from. She's clearly struggled a little bit to find herself a career and a foothold within the industry that she's really, really imprinted herself on and quite frankly can't step away from now. And even with her 5% nutrition sponsorship, she is having to delve into OnlyFans. And I truly doubt that that sponsorship is making her too much money. I would argue that it's close to something around $50,000 a year at the best. And sure, you might say that there could be easier ways to make an income, and there likely is, or should I say socially acceptable ways to make an income. And of course, I'm sure if she was in the sort of mainstream light and as well could fluently speak English and was in the American environment, this would not be a problem that she had to face making money and starting a career. But I'm not here to spark an OnlyFans debate and try to tell you what's justifiable or what's not because there's a lot more videos coming out on this kind of stuff. She's enjoying her life and that's at the end of the day what I always talk about is being most important. If you're enjoying the transition of time or the, the time horizon passing you by, life as it does is completely finite. It's not going to last forever. This day is the last day that you'll live until tomorrow. So if you're enjoying each of those days, then kudos to you. You're doing what most people cannot even possibly imagine doing. But I would be interested to see where her career goes from here. And like I mentioned, it's been almost six years since she's last competed and a little less with the powerlifting stuff, but still very long time. And I'd be interested to see if that she was actually able to pivot into collaborating with mainstream creators, as I think there could be a lot of reputation and money built there for her. And I think that her adult content must be sustaining her pretty well. I mean, the subscription is $50 a month, which if you're familiar with OnlyFans girls, that's a pretty high asking price. <laughs> And if you just do the math on that, right? Like, let's just say she has, out of the millions of subscribers that she has, 1% of them signs up to her OnlyFans. Hell, even 0.5% of them sign up to her OnlyFans. She's making uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm curious though, because her appeal is not going to last forever. She can't maintain this size forever. It would quite literally be impossible. And we've started to see as the years catch up to her, so does her skin and other aging components of her body. It's not a pretty look and it's only going to get worse. She'll need to transition into finding something that will outlive her physique in terms of a career and opportunity gathering. If you look at Ronnie Coleman, Tom Platts, Jay Cutler, and so forth, they've all created ways to make money that far outlive bodybuilding, whether those are supplement companies, different coaching strategies, different united endeavors that they try to, you know, conglomerate all together, podcasts, whatever, right? There's a ton of things. And Natalie being in her own bubble hasn't really gotten her much of an opportunity to expand beyond what she's doing right now, which is just making simple Instagram posts. And kind of a similar problem is happening with her TikTok, which is almost a much worse version of Instagram, where she just posts videos kind of mildly with erotic content with no real personality or value outside of, again, just kind of having slightly erotic content. So something needs to change because I think in a, being as polite as a can, she's kind of just known as this like big muscly bimbo and that's it. And her only following I'd imagine is just horny dudes with weird fetishes. Jim Halpert. Mm. I'm so horny. Okay, I can't help you with that not really much of a community that's going to sustain you long term. So in anybody's case, I think this could be a useful reality for you to expose yourself to. Your timeline is finite, buddy. You got to move on to something bigger and better, especially if you're stuck in the realm of having an amazing physique, being an influencer and doing things that involve your body because it doesn't last forever. However, it's safe to say that the community we've built here is awesome and they do have great resources for you if 
you're looking to improve your career, physique, or whatever. And no, they aren't drooling over my physique because it's shit and I'm disabled and have cerebral palsy. No, in fact, I have a whole discord with a fitness community and bodybuilding community in it that's there to help you with your goals. Coaches are included in the chat as well as many, many avid, avid people within the fitness community who are willing to help, giving you a space to connect with like-minded people, create career opportunities, and so much more. Hopefully, <laughs> something that will last in my old age. I don't know. Or you could subscribe to the channel. That's completely free and it helps me out a ton. See you in the next video.